Hello and welcome to this look at a couple of multiple choice exam questions on recognising polar molecules. This is an area that lots of people struggle with because even though molecules can have polar bonds within them, that doesn't necessarily automatically mean the whole molecule is what we call polar. So let's look at why one of these molecules is polar but the other one is not, even though they both have um, delta plus and delta minus. So in the water molecule, you can see the dipoles act towards the oxygen atom. So they're acting in roughly the same direction as each other. So the molecule has an overall polarity pointing from the hydrogen atoms towards the oxygen atom, as you can see from that second arrow I've just put in. So carbon dioxide, you could insert delta minus on the oxygens and delta plus on the carbon. But this isn't a polar molecule because this time around the dipoles are acting in opposite directions. You can see clearly that they, they point in opposite directions to each other. So there's no overall polarity this time. So what we say is the dipoles cancel even though the molecule has polar bonds. So let's look at a typical multiple choice exam question where you'd have to apply this idea. So this asks you which substance contains polar molecules. Now we don't have the benefit of the, having the structures drawn out for us. So what I'd say is the first thing to do is to draw the structures out and include any lone pairs. The next thing to do is assign any dipole to sufficiently polar bonds. So what I mean by the, the sufficiently polar bonds is if there's an uh, electronegativity difference. So in um, ethene, there's obviously no electronegativity difference between the two carbons because they're the same atom. But the electronegativity difference between carbon and hydrogen is too small to really give it any polar properties. So looking at the carbon dioxide, the nitrogen trichloride, and the sulfur hexafluoride, you can assign delta plus and delta minus according to the normal differences in electronegativity. So the next thing to do is to decide if the dipoles cancel out. And if they do, the molecule is not polar. So drawing them out again, and like we said, the carbon-hydrogen electronegativity difference in ethene is too small to have truly polar bonds, so that one's out. In the carbon dioxide, like we talked about in our example a couple of minutes ago, this is non-polar because the dipoles cancel, so it's not that one either. So with sulfur hexafluoride, you can see the dipoles cancel. So if you have a look, they all act in opposite directions to each other. So these two act in opposite directions, these two act in opposite directions, and these two act in opposite directions. So this one is also a non-polar molecule. So that leaves us with NCl3 as our answer. So I'm going to give you one to have a go at yourself now. So let's remember the three things that we did. So what I'd like you to do is to pause the clip and have a go at this. And I'll come back in a minute. OK, welcome back. I'm assuming you've had a, a bash at these four. So I'm going to put in the drawings of the four molecules. And straight away we can see that the dipoles cancel in the three on the right hand side. You don't even need to put the delta plus and delta minus in. You can see it just by visualizing it. So that means that the first one must be the correct answer. So here's an exam tip that happens to come out of this. If the first one happens to be the correct answer, then you don't have to worry about the other three and that saves you a bit of time. Okay, thanks for listening. I hope this was useful. Until next time, see you soon.